The country of Japan is currently in the process of releasing about a million tons of radioactive water into the Pacific Ocean. And the reason for this stems from what happened 12 years ago during the Fukushima nuclear disaster. If you remember, that was when a giant earthquake as well as a subsequent tsunami caused a near meltdown of a nuclear power plant over in Japan. The situation was a complete mess. The reactors got shut down. The backup generators, which fuel the cooling system, lost power, which then led to three nuclear meltdowns and the contamination of about a million tons of water. Now, for the past 12 years, Japan has kept this water inside of the plant, where they have been slowly treating it. But unfortunately, they have run out of space. And so the Japanese government, they have announced that they will begin to slowly release this treated radioactive water into the Pacific Ocean. Now, the big question here is very obviously whether this is safe or not and whether or not it will affect us here in the U.S. And so in order to answer these two pressing questions, let's unpack the entire situation step by step, starting at the very beginning. Twelve years ago, on March 11th of 2011, there was a massive earthquake which registered a 9.0 on the Richter scale over by Japan. That earthquake, it caused a 40-foot high tsunami to slam into the city of Fukushima, killing over 15,000 people and destroying much of the Fukushima nuclear power plant's cooling systems, causing, as we mentioned earlier, three of the reactors to melt down. Now, as an immediate response to this disaster 12 years ago, in order to prevent an actual nuclear explosion, the plant operators, they began to pump in seawater from the ocean in order to cool down the overheated fuel cores. Now, fortunately, this plan of theirs was a success. There was no nuclear explosion on that fateful day. However, after the disaster was averted, well, the plant operators, they were left with about a ton of this contaminated seawater alongside a growing body of contaminated groundwater. Now, that water, it's been collected, treated, and stored every single day for the past 12 plus years, to the point now where they have a grand total of 1,073 of these giant containers holding 1.3 million tons of treated radiated water. Now the problem though is that they have run out of space. These 1,073 containers account for 97% of this nuclear power plant's total storage capacity, meaning that they quite literally have no more room. And so government officials, alongside officials from TEPCO, the utility company which operates the power plant, they came out and jointly announced that the wastewater must be removed in order to, for one, prevent any accidental leaks in case of another earthquake. And also, the wastewater must be removed because this nuclear power plant is slowly being decommissioned. It'll be decommissioned by the year 2041. And the only way to remove the 1.3 million tons of wastewater is to pour it into the Pacific Ocean. Now, for the past 12 or so years, as we just mentioned, this wastewater was being treated at this facility in order to remove the harmful contaminants. The decontamination process worked something like this. The contaminated water was first treated with cesium and strontium filtering equipment in order to remove most of the contamination before they even put it in the tank. Then, the water was treated in a multi-nuclide removal facility that Japan called ALPS, A-L-P-S, which stands for Advanced Liquid Processing System. This process of theirs works on 62 of the 64 known radioactive isotopes, and it removes enough of these 62 different radionuclides, as they're called, to bring the concentration levels below Japan's regulatory limits. Then, once this whole ALPS treatment process is complete, the water was then put into a storage tank while the concentrated slurry byproduct, which contains all the different contaminants, was sent to a separate storage facility. However, it's worth noting that as good as this ALPS process appears to be, it does not remove two of the known radioactive isotopes, namely carbon-14 as well as tritium. And for your reference, tritium, also known as hydrogen-3, is chemically identical to normal water, which is exactly why separating it from wastewater is, for one, expensive. Secondly, it's very energy intensive. And also, generally, it's very time consuming. 